Welcome back, everyone. We made it through a week off in order to catch up on recording some quality content for all of you. This week, we've got two episodes planned for you, both covering character creation for Mouse Guard 2nd Edition with some of our friends over at Tabletop Potluck. But before we get into that content, let's get into some announcements. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone back as well, uh, including Amelia. Hey! Uh, our first episode uh, releasing with you back, which is amazing. Yeah, I'm super excited to be back again. Yeah, no kidding. So also, I'd like to remind everyone of our Gen Con events that are available for your participation. Uh, first and foremost is our very own character creation cast panel where Amelia and myself will be sitting down with James D'Amato again to do some really fun character exercises for a mystery pair of characters we've previously created on this show. Uh, it should be a ton of fun, and we have plenty of tickets remaining, uh, so please join us for that. Definitely. Um, if you want an idea of what that might sound like, you can check out the Secret Archive for one-shot patrons, too. We did something similar at a catacon, and it was a ton of fun. I'm so much fun. really looking forward to doing it again. <laughs> we are also going to be joining the System Mastery folks in their likely irreverent game show, Quisitum Mastery. I will be teaming up with fellow L5R expert and the bad boy of RPGs, Jim McClure. And I am teaming up with extraordinary DM and person, Victoria Rogers. And I'm not sure what to expect exactly, but with the System Mastery folks hosting others from the OneShot Network, things are sure to get interesting, I imagine. Uh, I think we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I think that's about all we can say about it. It's <laughs> 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 all anybody can say about System Mastery. It's interesting. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, There are a couple other events that are filled up right now, but if you are signed up for them, uh, we are looking forward to seeing you there. If you're interested in any of the events, definitely check out our pinned tweet or our show notes to see where to go and sign up. Also, I do encourage people, if you want, you can always buy generic tickets. Sometimes things open up and you can still get in. Mm -hmm. Um, And we'll try and keep you posted if spots open up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now for a new segment of these cold opens that I'd like to start including from time to time, uh, especially since our content creation muscles are stretching more and more nowadays, is host updates. I thought that said hot updates. Hot updates. (laughs) Hot updates. And I was like, is this like hot Hot. takes, Ryan? Do you not understand how hot takes work? It's not updates. Hot updates. Hot updates. (laughs) Sorry. That's okay. I'm tired. It's early. <laughs> it's not it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> okay. Hot updates. Uh, hot updates. Imagine some like cool local news sounds in the background. I'll have to see if I can find something. In these quick segments, quick. We'll, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, we'll t- yep, quick. Uh, we will talk about how our other projects are going quickly and where to find more information about them. So, Amelia, how are things going and uh, what you've been up to? Yeah, things are good. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I have been up to creating a- another podcast that is much less uh, nuanced, let's say, uh, called Garbage of the Five Rings. <laughs> it is a podcast covering the AEG era lore of Legend of the Five Rings. So mm-hmm. for people that don't know, that is everything from the first 20 years of the game before it was bought by Fantasy Flight. Uh, so all the bad stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's mostly what I've been doing. You can find us um, at G5R Podcast on Twitter or at Garbage of the Five Rings.com. We release every other Tuesday, and that is with my friend Jude, who was a former guest on the show, never to be welcome here again, uh, Jude Vase. <laughs> uh, also, a, a quick note, not very family friendly. No, it is not. Fine. I should say that. It is, we, I do check the little explicit box, um, uh-huh. but if you are here for our family friendly fun times, G5R not, might not be for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to know what L5R is about without having to read 20 years worth of lore, uh, we got you covered. Yeah, I've been listening to it, and it is extremely fascinating. I mean, yeah. that's a word for it. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, that's one word for it, uh uh-huh, is a thing you can listen to. (laughs) It is a thing you can listen to. (laughs) You can put it in your ears. Do I recommend it? No. No. Um, Other things I've got going on. June 21st, I am on an episode of the Game Closet podcast with Taylor LaBrush, noted designer of um, Descent into Midnight and all-around cool person, a lover of haunted Mm -hmm. basements. I am also on an episode of the Playtest podcast uh, with Chris Foster, which is that episode is out already. It came out a couple weeks ago, but we talk about mm-hmm. game design and we run through character creation for his game that he's currently designing called Hard Space Hustle. Yeah. Um, and what about you, Ryan? I have been uh, extremely busy myself, actually. Uh, I just got the latest version of Chimera finished. And we are actually going to be diving into the first playtest the day that this episode releases. So uh, I'm thoroughly excited for that. And possibly uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that there is a secret project uh, related to Chimera playtests. But uh, I guess stay tuned. But if there was, you would not not say it on this show. Uh Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really exciting because finishing that up has freed up my time to actually start work on my other podcast, my audio drama Side Heroes, uh, that I've actually started outlining, which is going pretty decently so far. Oh, that's exciting. You've been yeah. wanting to work on that one for a while, and I know life has just uh, uh-huh. n- not let you. It's about seven months past when I wanted to start on it, so... Hey, better late than never. That's true. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, things are making progress, and uh, I'm really excited about it. And if you want to hear a bit more about uh, me personally, uh, I did an interview with uh, Torn Pixie Twitch on Twitter, uh, and we did some really cool uh, discussion about RPGs and making podcasts and a bunch of other stuff. Um, And if you go to uh, her Twitter page, you'll be able to find a link to that. And maybe I'll put that in the show notes, too. Uh, Maybe if we remember. You can be like me on Garbage of the Five Rings. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. Sure we will. Future Amelia, (laughs) sure you will. (laughs) Uh (laughs) We will do our best, everyone. That's true. And uh, we'll probably only do this uh, host update or hot update uh, on the first episode of the series and maybe some of our Character Evolution cast episodes, so it's not going to be every time. Uh, But we hope it'll be a nice way to get some information to you uh, if you happen to be fans of us in addition to the show. Yeah. Well, um, let's read another review that we are so woefully behind on. Um, Uh I believe it is your turn for this one, Ryan. Yes. Uh, This next review is by Wydak Retsim, uh, which is Mr. Katie Backwards. Oh, that's interesting. (laughs) From huh. the, yeah, from the United States of America on iTunes, uh, and they write imaginative excellence. This is one of those shows whose premise makes you think, "Why didn't I think of that?" Only to reveal that they're doing it too well to even be imitated. As someone who's made roughly two thousand percent more characters than I've actually played, this podcast is eminently relatable. What's more, they demonstrate systems I've been curious about with helpful and knowledgeable guests who make even the crunchiest of systems understandable. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Um, that was really nice. Mr. Katie Backwards? (laughs) Mr. Katie Backwards. Uh, (laughs) I like that um, Katie Backwards would be uh, hyphenated. So, (laughs) Mr. Katie Backwards. Because they got a family. Because they got a family. (laughs) Hey, call out to some bonus content. Uh His last name's hyphenated because he's got family. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, poor Uh, Dirge. Poor Dirge. (laughs) Poor Dirge. All right. Well, with all that out of the way, here's the episode that you should have had last week, but now you have this week. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Enjoy.
Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and in this episode, my co-host Ryan and I welcome Charlotte and Megan of the Tabletop Potluck Podcast to talk about Mouse Guard, an RPG about playing tiny forest critters. <laughs> welcome to Character Creation Cast. We are very excited that you could join us. We're happy to be here. Absolutely excited to be here. Let's start by introducing you to our audience. Megan, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and any projects you're currently involved in? Sure. My name is Megan, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at tabletop underscore Megan. I am a role-playing game theater and cosplay enthusiast, so that's basically all I post about. (laughs) (laughs) And what about yourself, Charlotte? Uh, I'm Charlotte. Uh, My Twitter handle is thecornbreb with a B. I am also a performer and sometimes game master on Tabletop Potluck. And I also just play a lot of RPGs in my free time as well. That's exciting. I think that I would like to play more RPGs in my free time or just have more free time. Yeah, more free <laughs> time is a good first step for that. Right. <laughs> I'm starting to play more. I'm excited. Like, I'm, I'm finally starting to, like, play them instead of just talking about them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. That's the goal. Yes. It's a life dream. So let's go ahead and get into this. We will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. Uh, can you go ahead and tell us a bit about the setting for Mouse Guard? Start off with that. Megan, you want to take it away? Sure, I'll take it away. Mouse Guard is set in... It's technically our world. It's just a much smaller version of it because it lives among the forest floor (laughs) and the plains. And you play as mice who live within the cities. There's a few that are named. They're pretty important uh, just because the world building is obviously important to the creator of this system. And it's all based around the Mouse Guard comics that are also amazing, but you you don't need to have read them to actually understand anything about the system. They're just really <laughs> cute. And <laughs> so it's, it's just a very small universe, uh, real world, but you're mice. Yeah, you play as <laughs> medieval mice going on adventures. That's awesome. What sort of things do we need to play this game? Like, what kind of dice do you use? If there's any other stuff besides dice in the book, what kind of things do you need? We need a whole bunch of D6s. Ooh. A whole bunch. A lot of them. <laughs> a bathtub full of dice. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully not uh, Shadowrun level D6 dice, but... I think the book says at least 10. <laughs> Oh, that's not bad. Oh, okay. So not yeah. too bad. Yeah. Uh, there are also, um, I, I think there's special mouse guard dice as well, where it's like you have snakes and uh, swords, spear, and, axes. swords and axes instead of yeah. numbers. Oh, um, cool. But you can just use regular numbered dice as well. Hmm. And then there's only one book you need, which is really nice. They they don't have like a player's book and a, like GM's book and a monster book. It's just all in one so that it's much more accessible. Oh, cool. So, what do characters do in this game, then? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I wish this wasn't an audio format, because that was adorable. (laughs) I just, I really love Mouse Guard. Um, In this game, you go on adventures. Uh, So, all of your characters are members of the Mouse Guard, who are basically guardians and protectors, and some might say soldiers, but for the most part, you're more like community caretakers, of these cities and the matriarch gives you jobs usually it's stuff like there's a flood in lone pine and so you have to go to lone pine and try to help people recover Mm -hmm. from the flood or like you have to fight things that are more natural like you have to worry about the weather the weather is a big mechanic in this game because you're tiny mice so Mm -hmm. raindrops could drown you (laughs) (laughs) and you might come across predators in the wild and you need to either fight them or escape. And But otherwise, there's no, like, crazy, magical man trying to possess everyone. It's just very natural realism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The adventures can be as grand or as mundane as you want them. I think I know one of the examples they gave in the uh, book is uh, the mouse guard delivers mail sometimes. <laughs> you know? That's just a, yeah. a, a duty that they have. You can... That, that could be... An adventure in and of itself. 
Well, I imagine between cities that you're going through the forests or the plains or whatever, and there's natural predators everywhere. Absolutely. And all mm -hmm. sorts of natural things that you have to avoid. And I could see that being very exciting when you get down to that scale. So what is unique about this game? Why would you pick this game over a different game? I really like games that are a little more slice of life because it's a nice break. And this game gives you a nice balance of doing something that you'd never do, as in being a mouse. And I would assume. Still I, you know, I don't want to speak for all of I our can listeners. I say I have but never been a mouse. Yep. Yes. See? For those of us here, I think that's true. <laughs> but then still having uh, chances for showing heroics and making positive change in a world but like on a somewhat more manageable level and like something that you can still connect with yeah i think the game also stresses um your background and your relationships with the other mice a lot which is fantastic and uh, like you have allies and enemies that have a mechanical sway and I think that's really interesting. And not a lot of games really kind of put forward like, okay, no, this your friend, you know, can do things for you, or your enemy can hinder you, or and like your parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get on the bad side of your parents. No, <laughs> yeah. And Mouse Guard is a game of not broken families or orphans for the most part. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Most most mice have parents, and sometimes they say in the book. Um, like, lots of times if you're on a mission that passes by your hometown, most guard mice will try to make a side trip to visit their parents because they're in the area. And it's just a really nice small thing to add in there <laughs> so that you don't have as many edgelord mice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lone mouse. <laughs> Ryan, this is your game. I know. This I, is a I'm nice, like, wholesome game. <laughs> a nice, wholesome, very full of hope sort of type of game that, that uh, sounds really delightful. Now, a little bit about the history of this system. It looks like it first came out in 2008, with the, the first edition being just a hardback book. Um, and then again, a uh, second edition in 2011 uh, with a box set, um, which, is, which is really interesting. Um, seems like it's uh, geared towards more of a, um, a younger to adult audience, which is really cool. Uh, and it... Would would you say that this is kind of uh, a game that uh, kids would probably really get into? I think it depends on the kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think that I, when I first played this game, I remember thinking, this is really complicated. I don't get how a kid could play this. But I, there are also a lot of smart kids out there that could probably get it a lot, a lot easier than I got it the first time mm -hmm. around, to be totally honest. So um, I think there are kids who play D&D &D and stuff like that, so... You know, why not? <laughs> yeah, it's it's wholesome, but things like combat are a little crunchier than you'd expect. Oh, okay. And it is it, it does capture the spirit of the original comics well, where it's like you approach it thinking, oh, it's cute little woodland mice, but like things die and it mm -hmm. gets heavy occasionally as well, which is kids can handle stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like darker themes wrapped in a very cutesy mousy package sometimes. Very cool. Do you think that there are any like basic terms or concepts that people might need to know ahead of character creation if they're going to like follow along with us at home? Uh, what kind of terms do they need to know? That's an excellent question. Um, I mean, I would say really just like anything that is sort of outside of like the normal, you know what I mean? Like we yeah. all know what skills yeah. are, we know what traits are, you know, like that kind of thing. So if there's any other like words that it uses. Sure. Uh, so I think one to point out is your guard rank, which is uh, there's no classes in the system. Uh, the closest thing is the guard rank, where are you like a young rookie, uh, the tender paw, or a guard Patrol mouse, leader. which is the yeah yeah. <laughs> we stepped on each other's toes a little bit there. But Sorry. <laughs> there's there's a few different like um, guard ranks that aren't necessarily exactly analogous to classes, but have kind of similar. Uh, you get different benefits based on which one you pick. Okay, and those are picked at character creation. Those aren't, like, based on yeah. level, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Cool. Cool. And then, like, circles is another one, which is just social circles, really. Okay, like your <laughs> I little I guess network. the best way to say it. Yeah. yeah. And the rest is more, like, world-building terms. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Is everyone ready to dive in? Yes. 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 All right, I'm excited. Let's make some people. Okay, so you mentioned that there aren't really classes, so... um. 
normally that's kind of where you start in a game. So where do we start in this one? Uh, well, I think we can start with a concept, perhaps. Uh, any ideas that might kind of form the basis of our mouse and the mouse guard, our mouse guardian. <laughs> uh, who wants to go? To, I have an idea. <laughs> Doing? Like, what is our job? Well, sure. the thing the thing is, with mouse guard, all of the members of the guard will be assigned to a variety of tasks, so they'll usually still want people with different skills. They'll want someone who's a better fighter, someone who's a better scout, someone who's a better healer, so they don't have the classes necessarily, but you still need proficiency in certain skills. Like, you need to just have people who are better at other skills. Yeah. Sure. Like, um, are there certain things that are done in, like, like are more common in, like, certain parts of the world? Are there, like... I don't know if the cities have like um yeah the, things the cities do have specific uh yeah things <laughs> things that they're known for yeah. yeah so the um some of like some of the city uh there is like a city of researchers and scientists there is a city of uh, mine miners uh yeah. I think it's a port Copperwood city. a port city port sumac mm. uh Lock Haven is the uh, home base of the mouse guard itself. And there are a few others as well that I'm blanking on right now. <laughs> but there, are, there, yeah. are, there's a harvesting town that's known for like harvesting its medicinal moss as well, um, which is El Moss. And there are a few others too. So they each have kind of their own different properties. There's a part later in character creation where you actually pick your hometown, and okay. you get a, a trait and a skill associated with that hometown that you get to pick as well. Awesome. Oh, cool. All right. So, Charlotte, did you have kind of an idea of what you wanted to do? I had a little bit of an idea. You sounded I, like you were excited about something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I was thinking of kind of like a grizzled, stoic hunter survivalist character. Hmm. All right. Ryan, do you have a thought on what you would like to do? So this is this is like an open-ended sort of thing, right? Yeah, sure is. Hmm. All right, come back to me. <laughs> oh, you're not just going to say like healer? Yeah. Oh, Ryan. There is a healer skill in the game. That is very important. <laughs> I like that you're. I like that you're branching out, though. I'm really proud of you. Trying to. That's why I'm trying. That's why I'm trying to think real hard about this because I don't want to just take the obvious route. Mm -hmm. If it helps, the guard ranks um, are tender paw, which are 14 to 17, so they're kind of like the rookies. Mm. Um, guard mouse are the general foot soldiers. Uh, patrol guard is you're a little higher up. You're maybe 21 to 50 years old. There's the patrol leader. Um, and then the guard captain as well, who is like a exemplary captain of the guard. Oh, which which rank do you think your mouse would be, Charlotte? Um, I was thinking patrol guard or patrol leader. All right, because last last so la backstory. Last time I played, I played a tender paw, which is the youngest one, and I was very uh, exuberant and full of joie de vivre. And I kind of want to do the opposite this time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, and that sounds like what I want to do, which is, like, new and excited and incredibly naive. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. Nice. And what about you, Megan? Do you have a thought on where you're... I tend... Okay, I'm going to very much go the Megan route. This is going to be very... Do it. Do it. <laughs> um, so I'll just be, like, a basic guard mouse. So, like, probably, like, 19 years old, still younger, but has been with the guard a while. But it's going to be, like, a guy who, uh, a little chubby boy mouse who kind of cooks a lot. He mostly likes hanging out in the mess hall. But he goes on missions because he's really good at, like, scouting and weather watching and finding, like, correct herbs to help whoever the healer is, etc. Oh, this is so wholesome. That's very <laughs> Megan. <laughs> I think I want to do um, kind of like the, the pathfinding type of mouse the the people that go out and find the safe routes a trailblazer uh, mm -hmm. um and possibly even scouting for uh settlement locations in case that's a thing um yeah. things like that uh probably not not like at the beginning of my um guard career but maybe somewhere uh between that and the middle where would that put me you'd probably still be a guard mouse then guard I'd mouse say. sure yeah 
Charlotte, I think that would put you as our patrol leader. I am the leader. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we can go a little bit more in depth now. This is where we might need our actual character sheet with us. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll start with the tender paw since it's what I have right in front of me now. Um, so they're fresh recruits. All right. You get some abilities with being a tender paw. Your will is at two and your health is at six. And then you have the skills Pathfinder at two, Scout at two, and Laborer at two. And your age is normally from 14 to 17. All right, sorry. So Path, what a two? I'm sorry. Pathfinder at two. Okay. Scout at two. And Laborer at two. And if I'm not mistaken, Laborer is like a general uh, skill that you can roll if you don't have something else. Okay. Yeah, they. there is also... Uh, one thing that makes Mouse Guard a little different is there are a lot of empty spaces for you to put in skills. So, like, on the sheet that we have, it doesn't say laborer anywhere. Ooh. So that's when you have to fill in. All right. And you can be like, oh, I want to have a cooking skill or something and throw that in there. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. And these are the base skills that you start off with. And then once you pick out, like, your backstory and uh, your mentor and things like that, you'll get some more skills that you can choose to pile on top. Awesome. Radical. Um, guard mouse? Yeah. Next? Was that yeah. both of you guys? Yeah. Okay. I'm a bit nervous about like being the keeper of the book now. Like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's nice. <laughs> I don't get to see this Charlotte often. Oh, well. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the guard mouse's abilities, uh, will starts at three, and health starts at five. Uh, so you're not as spry as the tender paw, but you're still pretty hardy. And you're a little wiser. <laughs> a little wiser, yeah. <laughs> um, for skills, you have Fighter at three, Haggler at two, Ooh. Scout at two, Pathfinder at three, and Survivalist at two. And then your starting ages are somewhere between 18 and, 20, 18 and 25, the book says. Ooh. Is this in mouse years? Uh, I think it's <laughs> I would think not. analogous <laughs> to human years. <laughs> Um, and as a note, I believe these skills go from one to six, um, and three okay. is like you are fairly competent at it, and two is average, I want to say. That makes sense. And then, you know, four or five is exceptional. Six is like you're the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and now it's me. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think that I found the page that stuff is on. Yes. Ooh, oh, yeah, if it? you want to follow along, it's page uh 300 on my PDF. Oh yes. my goodness. I know cuz I expect it usually character creation stuff is at the beginning. So, yeah. uh-huh. it took me a minute to find it. Well, the interesting uh, thing oh. about the Mouse Guard book is that they have a little snippet of they go through all the steps of character creation at the beginning and then they go more in depth at the end of the book. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. So, we are doing patrol leader or yes. guard captain. Um I will do patrol leader. Okay, Ooh. so let's see. Um, will is at five. Okay. Health is at four. Your skills are fighter at three, hunter at three, instructor at two, lore mouse at two. Lore mouse, that's what I have to add in. Oh. Uh, persuader at two, pathfinder at two. Oh, no, sorry, pathfinder at three. Oh, boy. Uh, scout at two. Survivalist at three. Oh my gosh. I get yeah. so many skills. <laughs> yeah. And and Weather Watcher at two. All right. And your starting age is anywhere between 21 and 60. Wow. Um, I might do like a nice 37. I was going to say, yeah, mid 30s. Yeah, seems. we'll go with that. Yeah. Interesting. They have uh, birth years and stuff here too. Or is that supposed they to be analogous do. to. Uh, like real world medieval period of time or something like that? About, I believe the Mouse Guard uh, series takes place in 1153 or 1152. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it's also partly to place you within the history of the comics and what's happening Okay. in relation to the comics at the time. Cool. Yeah. So like there was a war with the weasels a few years ago that a lot of people, uh, if you're old enough, you might have fought in it, but everyone almost certainly remembers it. Oh, cool. All right. So our next step, it looks like, is maybe choosing skills? Yes. All right. How do we know how many skills we get? 
We it says it earlier. <laughs> I feel like it says it at the beginning of the book. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we we learn what we have from our um, backgrounds. So mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to think of the best way to word this. Uh, so you get extra skills from where you were born, what town you were born, um, what profession your parents have. Oh. Um, and then when you enter the Mouse Guard, first you're an apprentice to uh, some sort of mentor. Mentor, basically. Um, and you study under them for whatever skills they have. And then you move on to uh, a different mentor who's like actually in the Mouse Guard, and you go adventure with them. And you get skills from what they emphasize in their training. And then you become a full fledged mm. member of the Mouse Guard. Very um, cool. So the Tender Paw is actually in the stage where they have a mentor still. And I believe. Um, the rules actually say that for the tender paw, someone in your party is your mentor. Ooh. And you get to choose, obviously. Who's okay. your mentor? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> if you don't want to decide right now, we can also go a little bit into each mm-hmm. character, maybe build a little bit more, and then you Yeah, can I think we'll just do that, because I don't know anything about any of you yet. Yeah. Exactly. This, this is really cool, because it looks like you're building up your background, which determines your actual skills. Exactly. And if the skills yep. overlap, it looks like they start at two. And if you get a second one of those skills. You get to bump it up. You get to bump it up, up to six. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The things you pick in character creation actually matter to I the know. story. I know. I know. Right? What? What? Totally wild. Who would have thought? It? All right. So uh, it looks like where were you born is the first question, right? Yes. Choose a mouse town or city. Okay, so we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options for towns or cities. Um, and each one of them has what, it looks like uh, three or four skills attached to it. Yes, we're page 302, by the way. Okay. Um, and then there are traits as well, which is slightly different. Um, you have those, It it's basically what it says on the tin for each trait, but if you play into those traits, you might get a reward while you... Uh, oh, okay. In play. Being so for its bakers and bread. That sounds like that's a where my baking boys t- from. <laughs> oh, makes sense. <laughs> Ivy Dale. Ivy Dale. Gosh, this is so cool. It's it's I'm great I names. Just, I love any game that really makes character backgrounds important to how you play your character. Mm-hmm. Yes, because there's so many where you just kind of like doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, or you just pick one so that you get the skills for it, but it, like, doesn't necessarily make any meaning for your character. And it's all very well incorporated in Mouse Guard. Yeah, I don't like games where you just kind of pick from a list of skills and, like, you're never really asked to explain why those matter to you. Right. I'm going to go with Lockhaven. Wonderful. The home of the Mouse Guard. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that I want to go with Port Sumac, the uh, busy little port town between Darkwater and Rustleaf, uh, particularly for the weather sense trait and the weather watcher skill. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, I figured that would work out really well with uh, with a Pathfinder. Oh, I didn't even look at like at what the skills were. I was just like... <laughs> so what's that cool? Well, I was like, this, this little mouse is super excited to be in the mouse guard, so... <laughs> Lockhaven makes sense then. Right? Does. Yeah. So I think I think you pick one trait and one skill from the little list under each location. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, so you yeah. don't get Choose everything. one trait and one skill. No. You don't get everything. Why? <laughs> That's fine. So I'm really, gonna pick Weaver. I only wanted one of them anyway. <laughs> so make sure that you mark each at, that you they're the one that you pick at uh, a rating of two. Okay, and then for the traits, um, on the character sheet that I have, it has a level and checks and stuff like that. Do I need to fill any of that out yet? Uh, no. This will just give you it at level one. Okay, level one. Cool. I think I'm going to be from Elmos, a once thriving city known for its medicinal moss, for the harvester skill and the alert trait. Nice. We're all from different places. We are indeed. Ooh, but they're all but we like... all came together under a common goal. That's true. Yeah, so the deal with traits is basically if you can make a case for if you're doing something like I have the alert trait, okay, I need to roll something, and I'm being particularly alert while I do it, I'll get to roll an extra dice. Mm. An extra die. <laughs> the singular of the word. 
Because in, in this game, you basically are creating a dice pool. Yes. In order to get, what, successes? Yes. You want to get more successes than failures. Okay. That makes sense. On each die. Yeah. I love me some dice pools. It's mm -hmm. like my favorite mechanic. Okay. So now that we have where we were born, looks like the next step is uh, life experience, right? I believe so. Yes. So this looks like um, pick an area in which you are naturally talented. So tender paws and guard captains choose two. Everybody else chooses one. And it has a whole list of different things uh, that you would be talented at, which is interesting. Yes. Most of them are self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. um, the lore mouse is a mouse that has studied the way other animals behave and can kind of suss out and interact with other species of animals. Okay. I really like that apiarist is a skill on here. Yes. What is that? So Lockhaven has a beehive. And it's a beekeeper. Oh, yes. Nice. In our mouse guard run on tabletop potluck, my character, that was her main thing. Was uh, she was Her parents were apiarists. She was an apiarist. Like, she was all about insects. She was actually an insectorist. Um, so, but she... Liked bees. Love those bees. <laughs> I love her. I miss her. That's awesome. The character I'm playing is actually from her backstory. Or the character I'm making now is actually from Ginny's backstory. Aw. Nice. Nice, nice, so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. It's um, all connected. <laughs> where, where do we note this down? So these just go under skills. Oh, okay. You, you add in a new one. Yep. Gotcha. Or you can fill one in yeah. on the sheet if it's one of those. Yeah. So if you already have a skill that you want to take another rank in, you add one. But if it's not something you already have, you put it at two. You start it with a rank of two. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with Pathfinder for this one. Makes sense. I'll uh, bump my Pathfinder up to four. Ooh. I'm going to put my Hunter up to four. Because I feel like that's my main gig. Yeah. I picked Armor. Wonderful. I'm going to do... Orator, because I want to now kind of make this mouse kind of like Raganu from Cyrano de Bergerac. So oh. he is very friendly and makes poem and like talks to people. There's poems and stuff. Nice. nice. And the tender yeah. paw gets one more too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, duh. I see that right there in the words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick Smith, I think. Okay. Manipulator. <laughs> Yeah, aren't you proud of me for not picking that I one? I know, right? <laughs> I am making the most wholesome tiny mouse. Wholesome little mouse. <laughs> we must protect this wholesome tiny mouse. I know. <laughs> this is going to be my nicest character by far. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Does everybody have theirs yeah. picked? Yes. yes. Okay. So now it looks like we get to pick what our parents are up to. Yeah. Choose one skill from the following list, and also note the skill next to your parents on the character sheet. I love that your parents are on your character sheet. I know, it's so yep. great. Do I have to name them? Probably you will. eventually. Yes. You will. Okay. There, there's a space on the second page of the character sheet. That yeah. is your parents' name, their profession and rank, the player skill you get from it, their age, etc. You can mark a box if they're dead, but... <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Press dead F. trope. Uh huh. That's amazing. Okay, All so right. th we pick from this skill list and we get one of these skills, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say that my parents are cartographers. Ooh. Or do, do we get the skill from it? I would assume so. Choose one yes. skill from okay. the following list. Okay. And then it says also noted also. next to your parents. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to also take cartographer. <laughs> what if we're all just children of cartographers? <laughs> That's, you know, then we all have something to talk about. Uh-huh. Well, I was going to pick Baker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. So I'm picking Baker. <laughs> okay. I think uh, I'm gonna think I might go with Miller or Harvester. I'll go with Harvester. Harvester's good. I figure they were harvest in the special medicinal moss in Elmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to mark a rank on it. Starts at two. Okay. <laughs> So next up, um, how, do, how do you convince people <laughs> that you're right or to do what you need? Oh, interesting. <laughs> what a great question. So, so it can either be manipulator, orator, or persuader. And patrol leaders and guard captains choose two. Yeah. 
Oh, that's me. Yeah. Whoa. So, so what's the difference between orator and persuader? Uh, an orator is more addressing a large group of people, like, you know, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears mm. type of deal. A persuader is more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. Like, I'm going to convince you that this is what you need to do to better yourself. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pick persuader. All right. I'm persuader as well. I'm going to pick orator and manipulator. Ooh. I'm adding another tick to orator. All right. With whom did you apprentice for the guard, and what was that mouse's trade? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so this is who you apprenticed with before you had a mentor in the mouse guard. So this is the beginning steps of being a in the mouse guard. And they're on your second page of your character sheet as well, under senior artisan. Oh, that's what that is. Yes. See, it all makes sense. That's the word I was thinking of. Yeah, artisan. Know, right? Whew. <laughs> It's been oh, a long day. I see. Choose one skill from the list below. Note the choice next to the senior artisan space on your character sheet. I'm going to go with armor again. All Ooh. right. Building up that armor. All right. Um, gosh. Uh, healer. Nice. There nice. you go. We need a little bit of that at least. Uh -huh. I'm going to. I told you. I <laughs> I'm going to go harvester. I figure somebody's got to do a healer because, you know. Especially if you're traversing new paths, you never know what's ahead of you. Oh, yeah. So That's true. You need to be able to to be able to get those cuts and scrapes and There's whatnot taken care of. If you have a and naive foxes and, and weasels out yeah. there. That's true. And if you have a naive and reckless tender paw, you're going <laughs> to need to patch them up a few times. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? yeah. What? No. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> 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 All right. I think I might pick cartographer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was thinking about cartographer, but I'm like, ooh, healer sounds really nice too. Can anybody cook yet? We have a baker, right? We have That's a baker, true. not not a cook though. I really can't really bake on the trails. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> not with that attitude. That's true. I guess if we have some masons, could always anything uh, is possible. Build yourself a little tiny stove. Yep, every time we stop for camp, we have to build a whole kiln. <laughs> <laughs> this is my pizza oven. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody has to drag it around to the next camp. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Is everyone all set with uh, the senior artisan? Yes. Yes. So it looks like next up is what did your mentor stress in training? Very cool. So it looks like this is each garden mouse is trained by a mentor. And patrol leaders choose two of these, and all of the ranks choose one. So for this with the tender paw, mm -hmm. this is probably kind of where you should decide right, who, who is... in our team is your mentor, because then they can tell you, you two can decide together what the stress, what the focus would have been for your mentorship. Mm. With okay. Them. So we have a scout mouse. Mm -hmm. We have... A cooking mouse. Mm -hmm. And what else do we have? Our uh, patrol the hunter, leader. The patrol oh, hunter. leader. Yeah. All right. Um, I. <laughs> hmm, I'm trying to decide if I want to go with a scout or a hunter because whatever it is, I am going to ruin your day because <laughs> I am not sneaky and, you know, just constantly like dropping things. It's all a part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go with. Our hunter patrol leader. Ooh. Excellent. In which case, I think that I should probably pick the hunter skill. Almost certainly. All right. I get to choose two. Ooh. Ooh. So I'm going to bump up fighter and bump up hunter to five. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I'm got, very good at what I do. I've got pathfinder at five right now. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Is everyone all set on that one? Yes. What is your specialty? So you must choose a unique specialty. No two players can have the same skill as their specialty. I do not get one. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm not good enough yet to be specialized. I guess that makes sense. So is this this is another one that um, you get the skill or it bumps it up? Yes. Okay. And then you underline your choice on your character sheet. Ooh. <gasps> Fancy. I have to go with Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sense. good at what I do. I'm not I'm logged into my Adobe account, so I can't make an underline. Nope. <laughs> but it's there in spirit. Ah. Yes. 
I'm, I'm putting a little asterisk mm. next to my number. Oh, I will do go. that. Very smart. Megan, I'm gonna you're the smartest. I'm going to go survivalist. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I try. It's my survival instinct. <laughs> so, oh, I see what you did there. I'm going between either Pathfinder or Weather Watcher. If I choose Pathfinder, that'll put my Pathfinder up to six. But Weather okay. Watcher sounds kind of cool. Weather watching is very important. Weather watcher has really cool mechanics. Yeah, basically, if you succeed on your weather watching role, you get to tell the GM what the weather is going to be like. Ooh. I think I'll take that just for funsies. Weather watcher. That's my specialty, even though I'm way better at pathfinding. But you can find paths even in bad weather. That's true. All right. So the next step is double check. Make sure you did it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and executively decide. We did great. We, we did, did amazing. Great. Are you kidding me? We're fantastic. We are fantastic. I have nothing <laughs> above a two. Oh, wait. No, I have three in armor and everything else. Oh, no. <laughs> two. <laughs> Sounds about right for a tender paw. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think the only yeah. thing is you can't have more than 24 skills, but I don't think any of us have more than 24 mm-hmm. skills At the right very now, start, so. you can't have more than 12. Gotcha. But I also doubt that we have more than 12. Yeah, I'm at nine. Yep, me too. Yeah, I'm at 13. I have to undo one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, I'll take away cartographer <laughs> and put it into harvester, because oh, I remember okay. what choice that was, and that works okay. out just fine. Ooh, what choice There we go. That? Hold on. Now I need to count again. This is why we double check. This is why there's yeah. a step for 10, this. 11, 12. <laughs> okay, cool. Got it. It's all those getting Boom. double things being a leader. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a double-edged sword. <laughs> all right, so it looks like we're done with skills. Next up is, what, mouse nature? Our mouse nature. I love this. So what is this all about? It's a great mechanic. (laughs) So mouse nature is basically, it's your nature skill, and it's trying to decide if you are more mouse-like or more of a fighter, basically. More, quote, human, unquote, like. So they have it set as, questions so you start with a three and then based on your answers to three questions you manipulate that number oh cool so everyone's at three and the first question is does your character save for winter even if it means going without something now or do you use what you have when you need it if you save for winter increase your nature by one if not take the bold generous or impetuous trait at level one. Oh, interesting right this is my favorite part of character creation hmm i think i save for winter so I'm increasing my nature by one. I think that my character does not like not being able to enjoy what they have when they have it. And so, and they like sharing. So I'm going to give them the generous trait. I think that my sweet baby is just real short-sighted. Sweet um, baby. Oh, sweet, sweet baby. baby. <laughs> uh, sweet summer child. Uh, so I'm trying to decide if I want to go with generous or impetuous. Ooh. I think I'm going to go with generous. We have good mice. Yeah. What's the bold trait do? Um, I'm not sure, but I can check. Command F. Bold. <laughs> <laughs> Adobe Acrobat Reader is finished searching the document and the matches. <laughs> I know it's in here. But it's I'm there. Gonna... I'm looking right at it. Yeah. Be old. Because I'm thinking as... Uh... Rush into action without a thought for their own safety. Daring stratagems and reckless abandon are a hallmark of the bold. Ooh. Forethought and caution are not for these mice. Interesting. I actually want to look at impetuous now, too. <laughs> Let's see what it says here. Oh, it doesn't have it in here. Are they not in alphabetical order? No, they are. Huh. They should be. Right? Graceful, guards honor, hard work, independent, innocent, inquisitive. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's totally not. Mm. Weird. I just did a search for it and only found the one with under nature. Oh, interesting. Huh. Well, oh, yeah, apparently, apparently foolish and impetuous are both not in the books. Oh, wow. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Minor oversight. Yeah. Okay. Well, good These thing I didn't pick that one. That's what dictionaries are for. Well, that's <laughs> the nice thing, too. It's not really, there's no mechanic yeah. behind the word. It's just the definition of the word, and then if you can find an excuse to say why you are impetuous in the situation, you get a benefit. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to go with bold uh, because I think as a trailblazer, I need to use what I have because I never know what's ahead. Yeah, most definitely. When so, confronted... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go. Do it. Okay. When confronted, do you stand your ground and fight or do you run and hide? 
If you run and hide, increase your nature by one. Decrease your starting fighter skill, if you have it, by one. If you do, if you do not run, leave fighter and nature as they are. I think I definitely stand my ground and fight. Yeah, I think my character is pretty much the same. Uh, stand your ground and fight. We're members of the Mouse Guard. Mm-hmm. We gotta. We gotta. Hmm. I don't think that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great for having a, a hunter yeah. mentor. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm maybe easily frightened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so do I have to do anything if I don't have a starting fighter skill? No. Okay. You just increase your nature by one. Okay. I also am going to say that I probably run and hide at first. Awesome. It'll just be, uh, well, I'll come back. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well, okay. I have no complaints then. Yep. Do you fear owls, weasels, and wolves? If you do, increase your nature by one. If you do not, take the fearless, brave, or foolish trait. I for sure am afraid of them. Uh, Same. I think any wise mouse would be afraid of them. Yeah, I think I'm afraid of them too. Especially, I, given my character's age, I definitely fought against weasels mm-hmm. previously. Wolves I know, they're like nasty. dragons to these mice, right? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of the biggest uh, common enemies are, like, a toad. And it's terrifying. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're so just huge. I can't even imagine a wolf. No. <laughs> Yeah, there are supposedly bears and moose and wolves in the lore, too. But, oh. I mean, to a mouse, that's just got to be like, look at that leg that's moving. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it's know like, what wow. it's attached to. Look that's wild. Eldritch creature. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's effectively like going against a colossus type creature, yeah. which is really cool. Oh, my gosh. Some of the wises are cute. I'm looking ahead. <laughs> They're just so cute. They're just so cute. Okay, so can you tell us what wises are? Yes. What is the yes. what, is, what are wises? Um so wises aren't really they're they're basically your interests or your hobbies sort of thing. So like I didn't take any sort of I wasn't any sort of English major or theater major, but like I'm Shakespeare wise in real life. Okay. So Ooh. like I just know about it because I've personally decided no one taught me it specifically for a reason. My mentor didn't do it. My parents weren't into it. It's just something that I found and I care about. Okay. Yeah. There's no rank. I don't think you ever roll. There's no rank for wises. No, they they just give you benefits yeah. if it's something. If it, you're like going up against a badger and you're like, all right, well, I've got badger wise to try to hunt it or to try to figure something out about mm. hunt it. You're not hunting a badger. <laughs> <laughs> but there's stuff like celebrations wise, which is just adorable. <laughs> That's so cute. I'm just great at throwing a party, guys. So you get a number of them based on your rank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get one. Mm-hmm. And I can only choose from this like little tiny list. You got um, way easier choice. <laughs> I can have Code of the Guard wise or Legends of the Guard wise. Um, and I am going to pick Legends of the Guard wise. Mm. Where does this go on my sheet, though? It That's goes. a good question. I think there's a, on the second. It's, it's on the second page. Yeah. No, it's on the first page. Oh. Ah. It goes abilities, wises, then skills. Oh, there it is. Wises. Right below. But... Oh, duh. With the header that says wises. Wises. <laughs> cool. Why am I not seeing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just like, I don't see. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Everything's fine. I think I'm going to go with um, herb wise. Nice. Heidi hole wise. That's so cute. <laughs> They're all just so cute. Male wise. Gosh, I love Mouse Guard, guys. <laughs> it's a good game. The lore is just so deep and good. I really want to go back and read a bunch of the comics. I own basically all of them. Give so them to me. <laughs> you can borrow them at any time. You guys, there's recipe wise. Aw. Mm-hmm. That's freaking adorable. I'm going to take, oh, I have to pick three. Oh, man, double-edged sword. I have to pick three. Um, I'm going to pick Elmas Wise because I'm from there. You guys, there's Turtle Wise. Yeah. <laughs> I like Widget Wise. Oh. <laughs> Ice Storm Wise. Unseasonably we- Warm Wise. 
I I'm, just like to say weasel wise. <laughs> it, it's so nice. <laughs> weasel wise. I it's think I'm going to be harvest wise and weasel wise. Nice. Oh, you can even take like specific group wises like, or specific yep. mouse mm-hmm. wises. Moose wise. Oh my gosh, yeah, moose are so big. Moose wise. Turkey vulture wise. I have to know <laughs> everything there is to know about moose. Sun border wise. I'm I'm gonna go with Star Wise. Ooh. That's Ooh, my that's favorite one. movie. I just like that. <laughs> that sounds like really uh potentially useful for navigating too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also like cool stars. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh cool. <laughs> I feel like my character is probably like, yeah, yeah, that tells you how to where North is, but did you know uh-huh. the lore behind it? <laughs> <laughs> you see that constellation? Mm-hmm. Do they have like little mice constellations and stuff? Probably. It's the regular. Oh, but I suppose the lore is different. Yeah, yeah they'd saying. see them as different mm-hmm. things. Gotcha. I was like, it's the same stars, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have mouse stars. Their sky's not smaller. <laughs> it's actually bigger. I see what you're saying. I got it. I got there. It took me a minute, but I got there. <laughs> we did I it. I got all. there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, technically, it was a thousand years ago. It looked a little different. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like One Shot. The most fun way to learn about new games is to play. On One Shot, you can discover the amazing variety in RPGs by listening to actual play. Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a talented cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. At least once a month, One Shot features a new system exploring a wide variety of genres. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with OneShot and your favorite podcast app.